Hi there, everybody. It's uh, oh, it's still morning. Ten more minutes. So good morning. It's Lynn, the leather bag lady. How are you today? Hopefully you're having a great day. It's New Year's Eve, and uh, we'll just have to see what happens with plans this evening. So far, there are none, and really, we're not supposed to have any, are we? So that's just the way it goes for today. Um. I don't know if any of you watched uh, my trip to the stairs yesterday. Huge experiment, but I have learned. Now, the phone I use to do my videos is about two and a half years old, and I am scheduled to get a new phone. Apparently, there is a pause feature on the newer phones. So that is... I googled it, how to stop and start a video in the same place, and I had to go to the app store and get a pause app and I don't really have the time for that but uh, a girlfriend Christina shared with me that the newer phones do have that capability so that just kind of puts a rocket up my butt to go and get a new phone which I've been putting off because I can't remember my passwords I can't remember you know what day it is obviously you know every day I I have to think about what day it is so I don't know how to do all that stuff but this is now going to give me the incentive to do it because uh, I enjoyed yesterday I'm always a little cautious that uh, you know maybe you share too much but if you were sitting in my kitchen having a cup of tea with me I would share probably too much anyway so you know, you just hope that people are, if they don't like what you're talking about, switch it off. You don't have to say anything mean or whatever. Just, uh, and nobody has, but I'm anticipating it. I'm a little gun shy now. But um, anyway, let's get to our bags. I have a couple of decades to share with you today. I have a 60s, a 70s, and an 80s. And these bags I just listed this morning. So the first one I'm going to talk about has some issues, but I still listed it. So I showed it to you briefly yesterday. This is a bag that I've had for quite a while. Can you hear? Oh, it's got that saddle leather noise. I just love it. This bag I love, and I've kind of hung on to it for a while for a number of reasons. One, I find the 70s kind of tooled saddle leather bags really difficult to come by with any great size. You get the little wee kind of saddle bag sized ones, like the one I shared yesterday. Um, you get them all the time. I find them quite often. But this mahogany color and this, this size, not so much. So, um... I have listed it and I've disclosed as much as I can the issues and I, I did share with you briefly yesterday. So you can see that there is some cracking. It is surface only. It doesn't in any way go through to the back side. So I'm going to continue to work on it. Um, I've come across some new products uh, via my uh Beto's uh, Leatherworks YouTube watching. So I'm going to order it and uh, and I'll use it for other bags as well. But I'm going to maybe make this a bit of a project bag. If it sells, it sells and that's fine and I've priced it accordingly. Um, it is going to need some ongoing care, I feel. Um, the strap had some surface cracks as well. Um, but the product that my son bought me for Christmas, the Chamberlain's Leather Milk, has actually done quite well with these cracks. And again, not has not gone through at all. So um, I listed it just because, I mean, why keep it sitting on my shelf? The strap does adjust and it's one of these kind of old school uh, you know, you separate it and pull it back. It is quite a lengthy strap. It will go crossbody. I didn't think it would go crossbody. So to be honest, if it doesn't sell, I really don't care because um, I am going to use it as a bit of a project. And uh, if I get to keep it, I get to keep it. Um, probably not big enough for me at all, but um, I just, it's the color. It's the color that gets me every time. Um, 
I get, well, maybe you haven't seen this bag because I, I shared it on my uh, Facebook. Or did I share it with you guys? Um, actually, let's finish this one because I go off on these tangents, as you know. So the um, closure is just this little slip through uh, element and you can, you know, either close it that way or you can um, put it, you can put that through. It's difficult to do it upside down. You can do it this way, I think would be a bit of a pain, but you can do it that way as well. Doesn't it's not obvious which way, probably this way is the way it was supposed to be, but I find getting it through that bottom half it is really problematic. And if you've got stuff in it, I think it would be more difficult. The stitching, the lacing is in perfect condition. Nowhere else, I mean, you can see the folds here. Nowhere else is really cracked the way that top part has. And it's very, it's fairly supple elsewhere. It's just that top portion and you've got your little, um, and then this strap is, you know, like I wasn't going to list it because I really felt that it was just too, uh, too dodgy, too precarious, but that, uh, Chamberlain's leather milk has worked. And, uh, like I said, I, I've priced it accordingly. Um, inside is is really clean it's got all reinforcement here and you know if, if nobody wants to take a gamble with it that's fine I'll continue to work on it and it may be that I'll I'll you know do a follow-up video in months to come and you know either I've kept it or done something crazy to it so but it's on there I've listed it now this second bag little story there's always a story leather bag lady always a story so not this summer, last summer, um, I, you've heard me talk about the art crawl before, which is, um, an art festival here in Hamilton that we as vendors are able to, uh, or artisans. And I consider myself to be an artisan. Finding these vintage pieces is not easy. It's not as easy as you would think. And each piece I hand pick, it gets cleaned inside and out it gets weatherproofed and it is in excellent, excellent, in the best condition it could possibly be in for you. This little bag was such a popular little bag at the last art crawl I did. I can't tell you how many people picked it up, loved it, but nobody bought it. So here we are. It's a little 60s saddle leather. You see how thick that leather is. Little hard shell little case it's absolutely my mom loves this bag there is a little nick here and that is in the listing a uh, little twist i mean just this even this tiny little decorative element just beautiful inside is really clean there is one little ding inside there's just a little slice you can't really see it here there is a picture of it yeah, you can see it there maybe. Just that little uh, border, there's a little nick in there. But other than that, that's that's it. It I think all, all, the, all these uh, studs are brass. Just quality, quality. We talk about that over and over and over again. So this is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little bag. Oh, right. So you can either have it where it's really depressed there or you can pull it out a little bit. Almost like a little bit of a Celine bag, I guess. I Beautiful bag. It's small. It's small and the top handles are very small. You know, you'll get it on your wrist and that's or your elbow and that's it. But the more I look at this little bag, the more I just love it. It's a little bit of just, you know, a little bit of color. And then there's a little bit of in this corner. But I'm going to work on that. Like I, I'm watching these Beatles uh, YouTube videos and I am so pumped to, you know, get a little bit more expert at uh, 
refurbishing these things. I don't know how much refurbishment work my colleagues do. I know um, Purse Trippin does a little bit, but not that much. Um, she's the only one that I know will sell the odd vintage bag, even her newer bags. You know, sometimes I see them and I'm like, mm, you know, but that's what I love to do. I like the before and after. I'm not interested in uh, holes in bags or anything like that. Um, but I, I like uh, some leather that needs a bit of love. And it's insane how beautiful it can come back with the right products. And, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning. And, yeah, I think one day I may dabble in... Uh, you know, taking on some real, uh, you know, crusty, crusty projects. I actually have a briefcase from the 1930s. It's a German made briefcase and the leather is very, very uh, dry. Um, nothing wrong with it. There's no cracks. It's not broken, but it's very dry. So I'm going to keep some of those pieces and maybe try and work on them um, no deconstruction or anything like that. I don't have the tools. I don't have the patience, but um, I can certainly, you know, use some of these products that I'm learning about and the dyes. I'm very interested in playing around with some of the dyes. I've got a couple of vintage roots bags that need definite no rips, tears or anything, but definitely need some some dyeing. Um, and I, I really like to play around with that. So um, more of that to come. And maybe I'll do a video or two of me uh, working on a couple of these bags um, to sell or resell or keep. Anyway. All right. So that uh, little bag was from the 60s. The first one was 70s. And now we're into the 80s. Now this is um, a Danier leather business bag. I mean, you could use it as a, a, a bag, like a personal bag. I don't know that the color is going to show up. It's like a real aubergine, purpley. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't How could I? I was going to say, maybe if I shine my phone on it, but I'm taping on my phone. Oh, I'm such a dummy. It's It's a very... It's not Barney purple or anything like that. It's it's very deep. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Top handle. There's your little Danier um, tag. This was back when Danier was actually a good quality brand. Um, 2016, they went out of business and they were repurchased. And, uh, you know, still, a, a still Canadian owned, I, I think, but quality is horrible so there is a back slip pocket the gold um, silver hardware and then inside there is a slip pocket here and then I've got this strap under my arm and then uh, open inside it's got a key uh, lanyard and a zipper in the back really really nice bag top handle there is a little scratch on the back you can see it there there is a little scratch and I did work on that with uh with the Chamberlains but um it it it's fixed it a little bit and and there's some um there's some color variations down in the corners but again you know these are vintage bags and I some of the bags I see on Etsy, there's no way. I I mean, I guess maybe people buy them for a project if the price is right. or, But I don't know how some people offer some of them. They're just, they're too far gone in my opinion. But maybe that attitude will change once I start, you know, delving into the refurbishing. Little gusset. So you're not going to be able to fit a whole ton in there. The, the front pocket has a little gusset of its own. So that's quite substantial. And there is a shoulder strap, which uh, typically goes missing. So I think this is a 15-inch strap drop. So, you know, original uh, strap. And, I mean, there's no wear on this at all. I don't think this was used very much. So that's my three bags for today. 
So what do you what do you got planned for New Year's? I know I mentioned it briefly when we started our chat today. Um, don't get too drunk. Don't drink and drive. Um, be safe. You know, if you don't have to go anywhere, don't. The weather here, Leather Bag Lady Weather Report, is supposed to be a little dodgy um, over the weekend. Rain, possibly uh, freezing rain. We were supposed to go to Thorold to our friend Brad and Jules for New Year's. May see Carrie and Blair. It's not going to happen. But Jules, look what I got. Look what I... That looks wrong but it is a, an electric nail file and these are all and I got a bunch of other ones too I use this to um to take out some scuffs on the bags like I really I really am getting into this uh I've always really appreciated the before and after I mean I would get bags and I would show my daughter and say check this out she'd be like yeah whatever and then an hour later I'd show it she's like that the same bag I'm like yep it just I don't know what it does for me and I mean ask me to clean the bathroom and I said I don't give a crap how it looks after <laughs> but the bags we like what we like right so maybe this might be uh a bit more of a focus for me moving forward and that will allow me to pick up some bags that are a little bit more distressed uh the prices for these bags especially the brand name stuff is getting ridiculous there's so many people reselling now it's such an industry probably more so in the u.s than it is here in canada and i spoke about it before the bags that i used to get five six years ago um a, if you can find them, good luck. And by that, I'm talking about the Roots bags in particular. And B, if you do find them, they're $40, $45. And um, if you watched my video yesterday, I mean, I only charge $80, $85, $90 maybe for a Roots bag. And, you know, you take all your fees. And if I paid $40 for the bag and that $90, $80, $90 includes shipping, what am I making? 10 bucks. So, um, I mean, I do it for the love of it. I would be doing it anyway. If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would still be doing this. So for me, I love it. It's, I can't say that all I need it to do is cover the cost of the bag because it is part of what I do for a living, I guess. I mean, it's a hobby, but it does earn me a bit of money. But it's getting really, really, really tough. So if I can, I say it every year that I'm going to yard sale. I freaking hate yard sailing. People are so ignorant. They park in the middle of the road. I just hate it. But I have to do it this year. Because that's where all the distressed bags are. And if I'm going to move forward with uh, refurbishing bags as opposed to just going thrifting and finding a bag in perfect condition which they just aren't these days, then I'm going to have to get off my ass and get organized and go th uh, yard sailing on Saturday mornings. If I could find somebody who liked to do it, I'd pay gas, I'd bring coffee, I'd whatever. I just, I don't know, I don't like, uh, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. You know, little princess here needs to figure it out. Happy New Year, everybody. I appreciate everybody who follows me. Um, if <laughs> My crazy video yesterday, as I said, at the stairs. And I was too sore to work out today, I can tell you. Um, let's see what 2021 brings us. I've got a few ideas for different things. I shared a little bit of that with you in those videos at the stairs yesterday. I wish you all a great, uh, a great evening. Uh, much, much success a prosperous new year and uh, let's keep this little project going and see where it goes i appreciate all of you thank you bye-bye